In this video, I'm going to tell you three reasons why I actually really prefer the Swatch Pun over the Moon Swatch. But in the second half, I'm going to show you a Swiss diver from a hundred year old name that is pretty much better in every single way. Swatch announced their collaboration with Blanc Pan and watch people were either annoyed or mesmerized. The night will weave its... It seems like everybody on the internet had an opinion. How many of them actually had held this watch in their hand? That's questionable. But you guys know that I go the extra mile for you, so I went out and bought one with my own money. You don't want to know how much I paid. And after wearing it on the wrist for a week, I've got some opinions. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. Ever wish that you can share this quirky little hobby of ours with like-minded people, but also make friends from all around the world? Well, check out the new Watch Crunch app and the community that we've built there. Your watch fam is waiting. Like a certain communicable disease, just as we thought the Swatch fad was fading, it's mutated and come back to haunt us with a new variant. But the first way the Swatch Pond is not the Moon Swatch it's not just that it's 30% more expensive, but that it's actually an improvement in quality. Sure, it still kind of feels like something that fell out of a cereal box, but after my week with it, the crystal hasn't scratched up like the Moon Swatch. I like the styling, it's bold, and that big acrylic line bezel has a satisfying clicky engagement. I picked up the Pacific Ocean version with the high contrast black and gold color scheme. This has a Fume dial with a 36912 layout, which also includes a date. Some other ones like the Arctic and Antarctic versions have a more muted color scheme, simpler non-Arabic dials without a date. Whichever version it is, the hands do that funny wobbly thing when you adjust the time, reminding you that this is not a highly refined timepiece. But that's not the point. The case is nice and chunky and is 43 millimeters wide, but wears pretty well given it's 48 lug to lug. It's very Seiko turtle in proportions. Even the NATO strap is silky and supple. No, it doesn't have a screw down crown. I don't even know if you want to do that on a plastic watch. But with 91 meters of water resistance or exactly 50 fathoms, you don't have to worry about getting it wet. I'd be much more comfortable wearing this as a beater than like the Moon Swatch. The second reason you gotta love the Swatch Pond is that this collab is done with a brand that really deserves it. The Omega Speedmaster didn't need more publicity. It was like the first watch I learned about when I got into the hobby. But Blanc Pond is OG, founded in 1735. Do we have dinosaurs back then? The 50 Fathoms preceded even the Rolex Submariner to the dive watch game, and Blanc Pan followed that watch up with a smaller skin diver at, I think, 37 millimeters named the Bathyscaphe, a full decade before Seiko came out with its 62 mass, and some consider that to be Seiko's most famous model. You notice a little bit of resemblance there? Now, we almost lost Blanc Pan during the course crisis, partly because of their stubborn conviction to mechanically crafted watches, but that's part of their charm. There never has been a quartz Blanc Pan and there never will be. Respect. So I'm happy that Blanc Pan is getting their moment in the light. And for Swatch, this is sort of a genius marketing move. And I do hope that this provides an infusion of cash and attention to Blanc Pan for their watchmaking future. The final reason I love the Swatch Pond is seen by turning the watch over. The System 51 movement is shown through a display case back with a decorated earth motif over its bridges. Now, this movement does not impress with its craftsmanship, but nevertheless, it has its place in terms of horological firsts. Named after its 51 components, this movement shines in its simplicity and manufacturing efficiency. 51 is about a quarter the number of components of a traditional mechanical movement, and they're all sandwiched together with one big central screw, assembled without any human help. This allows Swatch to mass produce a mechanical movement that can compete with quartz, making it a perfect alternative for this watch. These are not serviceable, but did I mention they have a healthy 90 hours of power reserve? Well, what's a guy to do if all he had was $400 and he wanted to buy the best watch for his money? Well, not this. But guys, drop a like for this video. Let's get into what, in my opinion, is the best alternative to the Swatch Pond. 
The Glycine Combat Sub is one of those watches that just checks off all the boxes. A vintage-inspired Swiss diver with a tactical flare bearing, the name of a company that was founded in 1914 in Bienne, Switzerland. But Max, this watch is listed for over a thousand on their website. Not to worry, Glycine has a way of deeply discounting their watches. You can find this watch being sold all over the internet for about 300 bucks. Most hilariously, it's been seen in your local Costco jewelry section. Now they also make a 39 millimeter version of the combat sub, but this 42 mil GL0083 model is the most attractive to me. It has that classic diver dial layout with a matte black background. There's a date at three with a matching date wheel which i appreciate and you guys know i like a little bit of that yellow vintage loom a 60 click aluminum bezel provides pretty decent feedback and a flat sapphire crystal keeps the whole watch really thin at just 10 and a half millimeters it has a screw down crown that provides a whole 200 meters of water resistance this one ships with an attractive tubular nylon with a silver stripe now i do wish there was some ar on this crystal it can get quite glary but you can't have everything for this price the real value here is that inside we get essentially a salita sw200 swiss automatic movement 25 joules, beats at 4 hertz, 38 hours of power, all of the standard base specs. That's right, a Swiss movement in a $300 watch. That's a headline right there. The 50 mil lug to lug might scare some people, but with acutely downturned angles, I can just barely pull this off in my six and a half inch wrist. Sure, the case isn't exquisitely finished, but the Glycine Combat Sub is just a handsome watch with quintessential diver proportions. A nice fit that flatters a lot of wrists, all by a legit brand with real heritage. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware, Glycine a few years ago was acquired by Invicta. That's left kind of a weird taste in a lot of people's mouths, but they did promise not to mess with the brand's identity. And this isn't just a one hit wonder. Glycine also makes the Airman model, which has its own tremendous aviation history. It's probably the best GMT per dollar that you can get. Some other dive watches to consider include the Citizen Promaster Diver, which kind of looks like a Seiko that had sex with a Rolex sub. It is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but at least it's titanium. You can also look into Orient. They have a number of models, including like the Kamasu, which you can get in a variety of colors for about 300 bucks. So is the Glycine better than the Swatch Pond or vice versa? I don't think that's the right question. They're both awesome in their own right. The Glycine has unparalleled value per dollar. So if all you had was 400, buy this, a bunch of straps and post about it all day long on watch crunch but i know a lot of people who bought the swatch pond despite owning like rolexes and pateks and for them it's not about getting a deal on a watch it's about having fun it's about living in a moment in the watch zeitgeist it's about wearing kind of like a meme watch and being in on the joke so which camp are you in